Next set is F. Yeah, we do need parentheses, so let's say parentheses. Very good. Uh, but the y value is 0. So all you got to do is take the c value, which is 15 in this case, and divide it by the a value, which is just the number in front of x, 3. 15 divided by 3 are 5. It would be 5, 0. So when you guys were talking about your answers before, that's the y-intercept, which would be, well, the first number is always 0, because the x value is 0. And then what is the y value? It's negative 3. Okay, because this is a negative 5. 15 divided by negative 5, negative 3. What is that? Well, let's, you know, just to avoid any confusion, let's start both of these with our print i. With the x-intercept, the y value is 0, and the y-intercept, the x value is 0. All we've got to do is fill in the rest. So who has the x-intercept for us, please? Seth. Uh, negative 3, 0. Very good. Negative 3, 0. Does someone have the y-intercept? I know what it is. Olivia. 0, negative 7. There you go, negative 7. <laughs> Before we look at this page, what's the equation for finding the y-intercept? Now, yeah, finding the y-intercept, if it's in standard form, is just 0, and then it's c over b, right? Well, what's the other equation? Remember if you oh, y. have oh, a slope? y equals slope, or y minus a slope times x. Very good. y minus a slope times x. All right? Well, today's, today's uh, equation is going to be kind of similar to this y-intercept stuff. Uh, you will need the slope, though, but maybe there's just a little bit less work. We'll show you. All right. There's this stuff, though. So the cost for going to the zoo. <laughs> so uh, if you want to go see Tomases at the zoo, <laughs> this is how much it costs. Those are rare. <laughs> yeah, but they are ugly. <laughs> the first thing you need to figure out if it's linear or not, okay? If it is linear, then you've got to be looking to find the equation for it. What two things do you need for the equation? The slope and the y-intercept. Very good, Cooper. They are linear. Not, yes, if it's linear, you've got to find the slope and the y-intercept. You'll always need the slope unless it's in standard form, but writing equations in standard form is a huge pain. It doesn't pain. look linear. Okay. <clears throat> it looks like it's going up by 9 each time. So slopage of 9 on this one. So in other words, it would be $9 per person, but it looks like maybe there's some kind of initial fee over here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, what is the slope? Yeah, it looks like it is 9. That's very good. Choose any ordered pair. As it turns out, uh, writing the equation, you actually don't need the y-intercept. There's a different equation you can use. You just choose a point. You're good. If you do, the, if you do use the equation, the slope-intercept form of the line, then uh, you should be pretty good by finding the y-intercept like Christian was talking about. All right, this form of a line is called uh, point-slope form. But listen, th this one in the book is not what we're going to use here, okay? We're definitely not going to use that equation, okay? So let's look at the one that we are going to use. So the equations are much better if you just have y equals something. So y equals, all right, the rest of it's the same. You got the slope, which is m, okay? You can take x. This is just an x, okay? It's not an actual value. But you're going to subtract that from some x value, okay? Because remember, you're choosing a point, so the x value will go there. And then from here, you're going to add the y value to that, okay? All right, a problem that they may give you is something like this. So let's say, uh, let's say that you get uh, point uh, 3, negative 3. And over here, maybe you got negative 4 and 4, all right? And I'll say, write the equation for this, uh, these two points in point-slope form, all right? So 
Okay, well, the first thing we need to figure out is the actual slope. So from 3 to 4 is, I went up 7, right? So my slope, already I've got my numerator of 7. And my denominator from 3 to negative 4 looks like it went down 7. So as it turns out, my slope is just simplified. It's negative 1. All right? So in my equation, I can always write y equals... Get my parentheses with x right here, okay? Well, we just figured out the slope. It's negative 1, so the slope goes here. All right, now let's just choose one of these two points. So which one do you guys want? 3, negative 3, or negative 4, 4? Negative 4, 4. All right, negative 4, 4. Sounds good. Let's choose this one. What's my x value in this? Negative 4. Negative 4, so I got minus. But this one is negative 4. And what's my y value? 4. Yeah, it's a positive 4, so I write yep. positive 4. Now the final thing here is just to completely simplify this, I got this minus negative 4, so let's just change this to a big fat plus sign. Yeah. This right here is point slope form. What two things do you need in point slope form? Y intercept and slope. A point and slope. Oh, shike. Uh, Any point. Okay. Could we find the y-intercept from this? Oh, yeah. All we're going to do is distribute this negative 1. So now we've got y equals negative 1x minus 4 plus 4. And if I were to write this completely in slope-intercept form, very good. You'd get y equals negative 1x. These two, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So this would be your slope-intercept form. So write this equation in point-slope form, okay? This is not point-slope form. It is not. They gave you the slope, they gave you a point. Notice over here, it really should be y equals the slope, which is 4, x minus the x value, which is negative 2. So that becomes plus. And then we add the y value, which is 3. This is what we need to see on the test. Okay? Not this garbage. The previous equation in slope-intercept form, but what we had was not this garbage. It was this garbage. Okay? So plus 2, plus 3. Okay? Well, you just, again, I just go through this. You distribute the 4... So you got 4x plus 8 plus 3 equals 4x plus 11. That's the same thing they got, but it's just a lot more complicated. Shazam. So the first thing we need is point slope form, which is y equals, you got your slopage. All right, then you got the x minus your x value plus your y value. Okay, that's point slope form. Slope intercept form is y equals slopage times x. Oops. Slope times x plus your y intercept. Because notice on these, this top one is point slope form because you'll need a point and the slope. The second one here, you need the slope and the intercept, so slope intercept form. And does anyone have the uh, point slope form for this line? Does anyone have it? Okay. All right, very good, Christian. I'm just going to make that a plus one right there just to make it fully simplified, okay? That is excellent. That is absolutely point slope form, okay? Uh, does anyone have the slope intercept form? Oh, negative, negative three. So, 
Hold on, give me one second. Sorry. Uh, so what do you got? Well, let's find out. Well, don't forget the y equals either, okay? All right, well, you need to distribute that negative one-half to the one. It should give you negative one-half. Yeah, well, don't, uh, don't use mixed numbers, okay? So I'm just going to put three halves because it would be one and a half. All right, if I take this negative one-half and distribute it to the one, I'd get negative one-half. If I add that to two, I'd have one and a half, which as an improper fraction is three halves. There you go. This is a uh, slope intercept form. All right. Yes, Grant. These are, the, these are the many situations you're going to see, okay? Either you have a slope and a point, in which case you would use point slope form. If you have slope in the y intercept, slope intercept. Hey, that's pretty good. If you see a graph, you kind of get to choose, but slope intercept is usually the best. If you have two points, uh, I would use slope intercept, okay? Slope intercept is the most common one you will see, all right? But uh, point slope form also has its purposes. You'll find out more about it in ninth grade. If you have a table, once again, I'd say use slope intercept because it's more common. All right, here's example three. They've given you two points. Once you have it in point slope form, it's very easy to get into slope intercept. All right, uh, write these two in point slope form and slope intercept. All right, notice on these you will have to find the slopage, okay? So let's look on C and figure out what our slopage is. So this is our change in Y. This is our changes in X. It'll give us a fraction, all right? So from 0 to negative 3, it went down 3. And from 3 to 6, it went up 3. So my slope in this negative is one. going to be negative 1. Very good. All right? <coughs> All right, so we have two points to use. Which of the two would you guys like to use? Three zero. The six. Actually, as it turns out, three zero would be the easier one because there's a zero involved, okay? Yeah. So let's use, uh, let's turn this into point slope form. We've got y equals my slope is negative one. X minus, what's my x value? Three. My y value? Zero. Zero. Oh, this one's going to be rough. Let's distribute this. You got y equals negative 1x oh, so plus 3 plus 0. Well, the 0 is not going to make a difference here. Okay. There it is. This is both point slope form and slope intercept form for this one. Form for D. Something happened back to Who does? Hey, who has a point slope form for D? Wait, question. All right, since you guys are clearly not volunteering, let's look at this one as well, okay? So let's look at the Ys. So from 2 to negative 10, it went down 12. Okay, and we're going to divide this by the change in the Xs. So from negative 1 to 5, it went up 6. six. Very good. Okay, so the answer for the slope is negative 2, all right? So for point slope form, which... Which of the two points would you guys like to use? Uh, one, two. Let's use negative one, two. Very good. Okay. So we've got y equals my slope, which is negative two, x minus my x value, which is negative one. So I'll make it a plus one there. Plus two. There we go. That's point slope form. Notice there is two answers for point slope form on this. But when you turn this to slope intercept form, you'll only have one answer. So I'll distribute the negative 2, uh, y equals negative 2x minus 2 plus 2. But, yeah, if we look at this, negative 2 plus 2 is just 0. So, there we go. Slope intercept form. Remember the equation for this, it, at least in point slope form, was y equals the slope times x minus x1 plus the y value, okay? After I find the slope, Evan, all I've got to do is choose a point like I did there. 
And then all I'm doing is plugging value in for slope, the x value of this point, and then the y value of this point, which is how I got this one right here. That's it. Here's the answers for these, uh, except for, once again, in the book, we should not have plus 3. It should be minus 3, right? Yeah. And then on this one, it shouldn't be minus 2 there. It would be plus 2 here. Okay? So they use this point for D, and then they actually use this one for C. So that's a different way you can see it. But once again, slope intercept came out the same. All right. Uh, notice uh, on this one, it's giving you a table that you've got to find. You've got to be able to find the slope from the table. Okay. After you find the slope from the table, you just choose one of these two, this one or this one. And it looks like the book chose this top one here. As you can see, you got the 165 and the 5. Okay? All right, try E. Is it Y equals 4 and then in parentheses mm. X minus... Let me, let me show you guys. How many of you think the slope here is 5? I'll show you guys in a second. Oh, it is four. Wait, wait. No, let, let me show you guys, okay? Notice from 100 to 150, it went up 50, right? Yes. From 25 to 35, it went up 10. Yes. So my slope, it's the change in Y divided by the change in X. I knew it. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm telling you this because you're all wrong, okay? It's actually 10 over 50. Okay? Yeah, and that's fine. This is the x values. It's the number of buttons is independent to the cost. Okay, the cost depends on the number of buttons. This turns, this turns out to be one fifth. All right, one second. Now that you've gotten this far, to get the point slope form, you got y equals one fifth. No, do not use decimals. Okay. X minus, which of these two values do you want? 125 or 150? 125. Let's use this one, okay? So the X value is 100, and the Y value is 25. That's it. This is one of the point slope forms that you can use. All right. Start on the homework.